Shamaya Christo. Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Welsh Football Fans Podcast. This is our latest endeavour into the podcasting world. We'll be covering stories from grassroots all the way up to the Cymru Premier. If there's something to do with Welsh football, we'll be covering it. This podcast is brought to you in partnership with Pure Vans, Valley Carpets and Nathaniel Cards. But we're heading to Europe today for this first episode. As we talk to Harford West County, we have got Ryan Evans, who covers a lot of their social media work, the manager, Tony Pennock, and goalkeeper, Zach Jones. Let's get into it. And I am delighted to welcome to the podcast, Ryan Evans, Tony Pennock, and Zach Jones. Bored our boys, how are we feeling? All good, thank you. Well, honestly, boys, I'm so delighted well. to welcome today you the inaugural guest of this podcast and of course Harford West County a Welsh football fans community partners and Ryan go in a little bit to let our um, listeners know all everything about that um yeah so I think it was from one of your posts on social media uh, a number of months ago now and obviously uh, I think it was Wyndham Williams and, and Tom Pritchard are sort of uh, well Wyndham our partnership manager and Tom who in charge of all our social media I think got in touch with you guys and sort of applied to become a partner with Welsh football fans and it's evolved ever since I suppose so we're you know obviously grateful to have you guys coming down and you visited a couple of games you were uh, you got involved with the supporters Ev and you uh, you enjoyed the match the experience and it's again you know what you guys are doing uh, with media is is excellent and we wanted to be a part of it I guess so yeah thank you appreciate it oh it's no worries at all on our ends for the last few months it's been a pleasure to see the rise of the club in particular, and of course, last season, heading into this season now, it's massive, isn't it? Let's be honest. And when we were attending the Aberystwyth game, talking to the fans, you could see there was a massive, massive buzz around the place. The European games were on the horizon. There was a lot of confidence within the fans. I think they thought you had it in the bag, and that was in April time, to be fair. <laughs> so... The two big games that are coming up in the next few days. Tony, how are you feeling heading into these two massive ties? Just looking forward to it now. It's been, um, you know, it's been a bit manic the last month or so. The lads didn't get much of a break after finishing the season so late with the playoffs. Um, you know, they had a couple of weeks off and then they were back at it. And um, we're just ready to go now. We've got one more game left on Saturday and then we travel out to North Macedonia on Tuesday. So I, I just think we just want it to happen now. And um, most important thing is we, we give a good account of ourselves, go there and um, we stay in the tie for the, for the second leg at home in Cardiff. Absolutely. And it is a real shame, really, that that second leg is being played so far away from Hereford West. But as a manager and for the players in, in the camp as well, having this game at the Welsh National Stadium, that must be massive for everyone involved. Yeah, we, we'd rather be playing uh, at our home ground, but you know, there's there's only TNS in Wales that have the privilege of doing that. You know, Connors Key are playing their games there, Pennabond have moved their home game. Um, you know, there was other other venues that we spoke to, and and in the end, you know, we decided to to, to play at Cardiff. You know, we're really grateful for Cardiff City giving us the opportunity to play at the stadium. For the lads, you know, I, I'm pleased for the boys that they get to play a the same stadium as the Welsh national team get to play. So, you know, for one night, our fans, we would ask them to travel and hopefully they'll still travel in the numbers and we'll get a good uh, neutral attendance as well because the boys deserve uh, a decent crowd there on the night to uh, to see the, see the talent that we've got. And, you know, they've worked extremely hard to get there, getting through the playoffs. And uh, like I said, hopefully we, we perform well out in uh, Macedonia next week and then uh, we look forward to the home game. Absolutely. And on the fans were there as well. Obviously, being the community partners, we've seen firsthand how passionate the fan base are and travelling numbers up and down the country in the Camry Premier. Have you spoke to any recently who will be heading either away or to their um, second leg in Cardiff and their thoughts heading into that? Yeah. Um, I saw a couple in the pub the other night, I'll be honest, and uh, they are flying out down the same flight as us. Uh, next Tuesday, and uh, you know, a number of the staff from the club are going out as supporters, not not as staff as such. But um, you know, anybody who makes a trip, you know, would be extremely extremely grateful for. And it's back end of the season, the support we had away at Cardiff Met and and the Newtown game was fantastic. 
Um, it was great to see such a big crowd at Newtown supporting supporting the playoff final for both teams. And um, obviously, we're pleased to get through those two ties. But our fans have been excellent all season, and um, you know, we just want to kick off this season with with a couple of good performances and and see what we can do in the competition. But then, you know, the, the league season's around the corner, and that's our bread and butter. So, um, you know, by the time that comes around, Pontypridd at home is our first game on Friday night. You know, the boys will be. Uh, be firing all cylinders by then, and uh, our squad, you know, should be complete by then, then as well. So, yeah, it all bodes well for a good season. We know how tough it's going to be. It was tough last year, and I think uh, the league's going to be tougher this year. We're calling Bay and Barry Town coming into it, so we know we need to be at our best if we if we want to finish in the top six. We missed out last year, but it, it's our the first thing we've got this year is to finish in the top six at the end of phase one, and we'll do all we can to get that. Absolutely, and on to them two um, playoff fixtures between Met and um, Newtown. I I missed the Met game at the time. I was on the Ram campus at the time with um, my girlfriend, but I was rough with on like this, and I had a few of your fans who were egging me on to go after vis- visiting Andy Aberystwyth game. I was gutted to miss that. But watching it on, I'm score your Zach's performance that day, utterly superb. So... I, I got to ask, to be honest, I don't know if I'm being cheeky or not by you, Zach. With a name like Zach Jones, I know your Kiwi's number one and everything, but are you eligible to play for Wales? We can do it at the moment, let's be honest, who's decent. So, oh. Oh, Apologies, I think the internet's cutting up a little bit. Zach's frozen, is he? It appears so. Come out and come back in, Zach, if you can hear me. Oh, there you go. You there? Did you hear that question, Zach? Not at all, no. <laughs> or, well, I'll try and repeat it to the best I can. With a name like Zach Jones, have you got any Welsh blood in you? You're playing in the Cymru Premier. You're smashing it with the performances. Our national team are in dire need of a decent keeper going on the last few games. So... I do have a little bit of Welsh heritage, yeah. Um, my grandfather's he's born in Wales, and uh, so it makes me, I think, a quarter Welsh. So there's a little bit of Welsh blood there, but but no, I like to think I'm um, Kiwi through and through. Well, I'm, you're in Kiwi's number one chanted of the bridge, mad or must give you some immense confidence and pride. Fans love you, so I really don't blame you with that one. Yeah, no, no, it's um, definitely good to get the the Kiwi chance, you know. Reminds me a bit of home, and yeah, but no, it's been uh, it's been good. Well, on that, is for you yourself, was it a massive jump going all the way from New Zealand to West Wales? Like, it's a bit of a um, culture shock for there, surely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I originally moved over over here with nothing really on. I had no opportunities lined up, but uh, yeah, I was staying with the family I have here in Swansea, and then all of a sudden. This kind of popped up, and yeah, it was a little bit of a culture shock. But um, no, it's not too um, too different than New Zealand in terms of the landscape here in Wales. So there is um, some similarities there. So it is a bit of a home away from home for me at the moment. Well, the two nations have really got one thing in common, and that's just the sheep. Really thinking about it, both things <laughs> populated. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, you're not wrong. We're both called sheep shaggers, so. Well, as a player yourself now, going into some European fixtures and yet another Cymru Premier season, are you looking forward to it personally? What, have you got any ambitions heading into the campaign? Yeah, no, really excited. I mean, you know, first of all, we've got the European Games coming up next week and you know, we're all really excited for that. And um, yeah, it's a great opportunity for all of us to kind of show ourselves on a on a big stage and show what we're made of. Um, so it would be really good to to kind of prove a few people wrong and um, show that Welsh football is is really a lot more competitive than th- people make it out to be. And then obviously the season coming up in a month is also, yeah, really exciting. And um, no, we're all really ready to go to, to compete, you know, the top end of the table and, you know, um, really show what we're made of and show our character that we've kind of progressed over the last last season excellent stuff and obviously europe is massive but it's been nearly two decades since harford west were lost in a european competition ryan can you tell us a little bit more about that 
last tie in the UEFA Cup, it was, I believe. Yeah, before my time at the club, I suppose. But, you know, you, you speak to those that were around. I suppose Mickey Ellis is still with us. You know, he, he was uh, part of the coaching staff back then as well. Um, Wolvesy, the former manager, he was a player back then. I think he was a 19-year-old left-back uh, who, who turned out at Ninian Park that night. Um, Tim X, who, again, former player who's uh, Pembrokeshire-based, he's the only half for West County player to ever score in Europe. So speaking to Hicksy and guys like that and about that experience, the, um, it, was, it was a tough one. I think there was some full-time internationals in the, the Icelandic club team uh, who you know who performed in the, the away leg first. They, uh, I, I think I can't remember the exact score, but I think it was a comfortable win over in Iceland for the home team. And then back in Indian Park, half the West scored first, took the lead, got a bit of uh, hope, I suppose, in the camp. And then, uh, yeah, I think they came out uh, comfortable victors in, in that one as well. But that was the first time. Uh, we're hoping to obviously go one better this time, at least to score a couple of goals if we can. But, yeah, to remain competitive against a really tough opponent uh, in uh, Stenja, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, will be, uh, will be a tough ask over the next fortnight. But I told you that I'm really excited to, to get stuck into it now. Well, absolutely. Um, it's gone full circle in a way to be playing back in Cardiff in Europe. So maybe history may repeat itself, but I'm hoping for a positive outcome. I think we all are. Mm. The thing with Welsh football, the way I see it, when our sides are in Europe, I think all sort of rivalries in the Cymru Premier go out of the window a little bit. Everyone wants to see each other doing well. And I think with Hereford West, the beauty of the club is you're happy to show off your story and for last season and at the moment as well now you can have it all it's a superb production I've got to say and the amount of people who are involved in Welsh football who absolutely love following the series is superb so I'm I, can you just tell us the other listeners about how the series came about and its current state at the moment yeah, random, I suppose. Um, I was a part of the club's coaching staff many years ago and and, and left. Um, but and then coming back to see after Rob sort of started his tenure in charge as chairman of the club, got to speak into Rob and said sort of what my full-time job was, working with sort of technology, uh, mentioned that, you know, how I could sort of get back involved, I suppose. And it just sort of... Uh, transpired over a couple of months through conversations and then we came up with the idea of doing a bit of videography and, and coverage of sort of behind the scenes again to give further insight into the club for supporters and those following Welsh football and it's just grown and grown um, I'm a one man band doing it so I appreciate the feedback, you know it's, it's tricky sometimes to to portray the messages and, and what goes on in the right way but Hopefully now uh, we're, we're currently, well, episode five goes out tonight, which covers obviously the, the playoffs. Zach Heroics at Cardiff and, well, and up in Newton, where we were obviously successful in the, the playoff uh, win. And then at the end of the episode, there'll be uh, the big, well, I say shock announcement. Most people have seen me back out with the camera already. Uh, we are having a, an episode six, so to speak, um, which will cover all of our European adventures. So... Tony, Rob and I went out to Geneva for the UEFA HQ draw uh, a couple of weeks ago. That will be covered. We have our friendlies uh, over in Northern Ireland against Lam. We sent, like you mentioned, we played Panabont last week. Who were, uh, again, they're in Europe, but we wish them all a success. It was, it was a friendly, but there was a bit of bite amongst it. So that, that's covered. And then, obviously, we, we fly to Macedonia, so God knows what footage we'll get now this week uh, as we're abroad. Oh, it's superb, and granted, if the result goes the way of the club, will we see an episode seven in the future? <laughs> well, it, it's been joked. Episode seven, titled "The Group Stages" or the "The Group of Death." Who, well, fingers crossed, eh? But yeah, who knows? I mean, in the hypothetical situation, you go on to win the tournament, you could end up having <laughs> a lot more editing to do throughout the season. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I would. Uh, I would fancy that. It's uh, it's intense. All the editing, you know. I spend a lot of my uh, my evenings and weekends, you know, doing the edits and things and and perfecting it. And yeah, the amount of times I've watched it, that it, it's still goosebumps a lot of it, particularly the playoff drama and, and excitement. Um, it, it's a couple of goosebump goosebump moments throughout that. But uh, yeah, excited again. Like I said, Macedonia. Who knows what uh, goosebumps are still to come. 
Oh, absolutely. Well, Tony, yourself, you were featured predominantly on the series, of course, as a manager having to deal with, say, Scorio and S4C throughout the season, having an in-house documentary with all eyes on you as well as your players. How does that make you feel? Are you used to it or, do you, or to be honest, do you love it, like having that little spotlight on him? I got to be fair to Ryan. He edits edits quite well. There's a lot of uh, there's not much dressing room footage um, in the documentary. I think uh, I think it had to be cut out the vast majority <laughs> of the in the dressing room. If I'm honest, especially when uh, we haven't performed to the level we have. But um, you don't really notice Ryan doing it. If I'm honest, and I think he leaves the camera somewhere and you don't know it's there. You just the, the boys are quite natural with it. It, it uh, surprised me watching the documentary. You know, it, it, there's things that I've seen that I, I didn't know was being filmed. But, you know, credit to Ryan. He's done a great job. And um, the most important thing is it highlights the lads and it highlights the club and what the club are trying to do. And, um, you know, in the space of a number of years since Rob has been here, the club's gone from strength to strength. For us to get into Europe in, in Rob's third year it was a massive achievement. It, it was always the target, but um, you know, Rob had a five-year plan, and we and he's achieved it in three. So I've got to say, well done to Rob and the board for for backing <clears throat> not only myself but Mickey Hayen and and Wolsey as well to get them out of out of the, uh, the Cymru South initially. So um, you know, hopefully we you know the boys have repaid the club in some small part, and and you know, hopefully we'll we'll improve again this season and um, break some more records coming into this season than we did last year. Absolutely. And on to this season now. It, the club has been building strength by strength over the years, heading into a new Cymru Premier campaign. What are you looking to achieve? Is um, Cup success on your mind or is it about just building your way further and further up the table? Yeah, the league's our bread and butter. You know, we set a target last year, finishing top six. We didn't achieve that. You know, and then to get in the playoffs, finishing seven was tough. But then to, to win the playoffs was, was massive and a great achievement for the whole club. Um, you know, we're not the only club who's saying they want to finish top six this year. You know, everybody's got potential to do that. A lot of teams have strengthened. Colin Bay and Barry come into the into the league. Colin Bay are very strong and Barry, you know, have got fantastic history of, of of competing in this league and competing in Europe. So we're under no illusion it's going to be tough this year. So we'll have to be at our best. Um, we've lost seven players. Um, we brought six in. Uh, hopefully, we can um, try and get somebody else over the line in the next day or so, uh, which would be a which would be a massive boost for us. Um, and, and we just hopefully we we keep everybody fit. Something that we struggled with last year. We've got a couple of injuries already that's going to miss Europe, which is a blow. But you know that's what the squad's for, and then people will get the opportunities as they did last year. Have to step up and take their opportunities when they come. You know, and that's all we can ask of them as coaching staff. And um, and that's whether you you know we don't look at a team of eleven. We got we've got a squad of twenty one at the moment. Hopefully twenty two by this time tomorrow, and um, you know hopefully everybody else uh, everybody performs to the level that we know that they can. And and who knows what we can achieve? We know how tough it is, but you know we aim as high as possible. Very positive stuff. I think that just about wraps us up today, gents. Thank you so much for your time. And obviously, all the best for the upcoming fixtures. Welsh football fans are all right behind you. And we just want to see the club progress. And of course, just bring on the, bring on the conference league. Diolch and Vaur to Ryan, Tony and Zach for coming on today's episode. It was a pleasure to speak to the club before they head off on their European tour. Thank you so much for listening or watching today's podcast. It is a real pleasure to get us off the ground. As always, check out the Welsh Football Fan social media channels to find out when next episodes are dropping, incoming guests, or everything you need to know will be on our socials. Also worth checking out is our website where you'll see uploads of the podcast there and also some superb articles written by yours truly. Whatever you're after, the history of Cyril the Swan beheading mascots or want to look at the whales you've set up, the Welsh Football Fan's website covers it all. As always, this podcast is brought to you by our partners, Pure Vans, Valley Carpets and Nathaniel Cars. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you in the next episode.